Welcome back, and today we're going to be making Brick Breaker the classic. So I'm sure you've all played it at school, various things like that, um, where you've got a bunch of bricks on the screen up here, and then you've got to use a paddle at the bottom to go ahead and destroy those bricks. So quite a simple game, um, but it teaches quite a lot of fundamentals, so we're going to stay at that today. Let's get things started by making a new P5 project from Replit or P5 Editor, whichever one you're doing, and then I'm going to go ahead, go to the P5 Play website, I'm going to copy that, and we're going to replace our JS Lua script here. So now we've got P5 Play installed along with the blank library. So, first thing to start is we need some variables. So let's go nice and easy. So we're going to have a player, so let, um, let's not call it player, we're going to need a ball, let bricks, so bricks at the top, and then let our paddle, I was going to call paddle player, but I think paddle's better. So, first thing we want to do is we're going to make a group of sprites. So we can use a thing in P5 Play called a group, which is like an array, but what we can do is we can set all the attributes and things we want. Alternatively, we could not use P5 uh, Play quite quite as easy, really, and achieve the same thing. So what I might do is do another video on how you can do it without using this library. So I'm going to do bricks equals a new group, like that. And then we're going to set some attributes. So we've got bricks.width, so w equals to 30. We've got bricks.h, so for height. So we're 30 pixels by 20 pixels, and then bricks.collider equals D for dynamic, which means basically it has collisions and physics and things. So the next thing we're going to do is create a 2D array, or for loop, sorry. Um, a nested for loop. Our bricks. So you can either use a, because we're using a group, we don't need a 2D array. But if we wasn't going to use a group, we could have, we would have to make a 2D array. Both things work, and they work exactly the same code wise. It'd just be we'd be appending rather than creating a new brick, which we'll do in a minute. We've got four. Let i equal zero. I is less than and however many bricks we want. So I'm going to say 11 because I want um 10 bricks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it not at zero. I'm going to start it at one. That's mainly just later on when we draw them. Now what's even better, if I'm honest with you, is to stick a constant in. So we're going to say, um, let's say, that'll be the number of columns and rows. Okay. Um, like that. Um, so that's going to be the number of columns. Then for let j equals zero. J is less than calls J plus plus like that. I need to get a new keyboard. It's not ideal. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say once once we've done for our loop for our rows and columns, we're gonna make a new bricks dot sprite. Make sure you've got a capital. I'm just gonna zoom uh let's scroll a little bit so we can just see that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do i times bricks dot w and then j times bricks dot w. So the reason I've done that, just to explain it a little bit, is because I've started it at one, um essentially gonna multiply. I think maybe I should do that same this one as well, so it's a bit more spaced out, I'll decide later on. But basically the first time it goes round, it'll do one sprite here, if I just get rid of that. It'll do um one sprite here and here and here and draw a nice little row for us, which would be very nice and it'll it'll fit, it'll work well. Um, but yeah, essentially it's just so it spaces out properly when we, when we draw that out. If I run that now, it should, if I lose my errors, got, a little, got one little error there, so let's just check. Um, don't know why it's not liking that. Um, new bricks are sprite, that's there. C++. Doing things like that on 25 for some reason. I'm not too sure why it's not liking brackets there. Maybe something daft, I'm sure that I've accidentally done. So we've got new group there. Ah, easy one. So I started talking about columns and forgot to put the I. So I should now go from there. It's not looking line 19. Let's remove that one. New bricks.sprite. 
Let's put some coal in our digger. There we go. So I should wait now. We should have a bunch of bricks. Okay, now clearly I am half asleep. So I was doing it 11 by 11, so now I've got two loads of bricks there. Um, probably space them a little bit, give them be due. Do with moving them down a little bit, maybe. But we'll work with that for now. It's working. I can always pull them down a little bit if I need to. Um, let's just do right. Let's see if that makes it look a little bit nicer. The rows. There we go. So we can see that a bit more now. Um, so it's spacing them out. So basically, what we're doing there is because it was starting at zero, it was doing it right on the top of the screen, which isn't ideal. Um, so that's that. So now we're going to make a new, new sprite. So we're going to call that ball. So we've got that already. So we can say ball equals new sprite. And now I could do all of these things in one line, but I like to separate it out if I'm honest with you. Um, so ball dot collider equals dynamic because we want to just hit things. We can hit things, and it's not going to be a very good ball. Um, ball dot diameter. Um, twenty pixels I think would be good for a ball. We can always change that later on. Um, and we've got ball dot velocity dot x. Let's put us three for now. We can change that later on. And then ball dot velocity dot y equals two. That's just so it's, it doesn't go straight across and look silly. And then what we need to do now is we need to put in the um, functionality for if it overlaps something. By overlaps, that's going to be it's touching these um, bricks. So I'm going to do ball dot overlaps, and then the thing it's looking for the individual bricks, and then what function we're going to call. So we're going to call it destroy. We're going to sort that out later on. And let's make a new paddle. Yep, call the paddle. So paddle equals new sprite. And then what's that? A hundred. So it's a hundred across. Um then I need to go 30. What I should probably do actually, thinking about it, I should probably have a better canvas size. So let's just make it a bit smaller. So let's just do 300 and 200, which is a bit smaller. And then let's do that. The width divided by two, so a bit in the middle. So it'll still be 100 pretty much anyway. Uh, probably something big with more after it. Um, and then let's have it 30 pixels wide by 10 pixels. So what should happen now, provided nothing breaks and I don't make some rookie mistakes, we should. Um, well, they would have worked, but I just need to put the, the function in for destroy. So we'll just do a function destroy for now, and we'll leave it blank, just so it's even going to complain at us. So there we go. So I've got paddle, I've got a ball, and I just need to call the clear function just so it doesn't do that. And then the ball moves. So that's 90% of the game is done. Possibly a little bit too wide on there. Let's just put that to 320. I think that'll fix that'll put another, bo uh, another block on there. Pretty much there in it, yeah. So that's all the code there pretty much sorted. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do paddle.collider equals kinesthetic or kinetic um it's more like a kinetic basically means that no one else can move it except for me um let's make that a bit wider just make all that easier so now in our draw function what we need to do is allow the paddle to move so if kb dot pressing um let's say the a key else if kb dot pressing key like that that's nice and then what we're going to say is um paddle dot x minus equals five pixels and then paddle dot x plus equals five so there we go so i should move the paddle all right so let's run that and see if that works and then move the paddle looking good and the ball's a bit big i think i think the ball should be a bit smaller i think it'd be 10. So that's that done there. And then the next thing we'll do, so 90% of the game is done now, is we need to just stop it from going off the screen and losing the ball forever. So what we're going to do is if ball.y is greater than a height or ball.y um, is less than zero. So if it's too high or going off the screen, then we're just going to do ball dot velocity dot y and then all we're going to do is reverse it so it's just going to swap it and then else if ball dot x is greater than the width or 
4.x is um, less than 0. 4.x, dot uh, l.x, sorry. Minus 1, that should be minus 1 there as well. So all it does is that that will just reverse it. Times it by minus 1, it goes negative. Times negative by positive, goes, um, sorry, times negative by negative, sorry. It'll go ahead and flip it, essentially. So we can check that works now. So it should bounce off there. Okay, so now it's overlapping, but it's not doing anything. So I mean, it's sort of working. Probably do something to make it so the ball doesn't slow down either. But it's pretty much there. But now, I think so it bounces off the paddle and bounces off the um, bricks and destroys them. So function destroy, we're going to pass in the player or the ball. So we put B for ball and then the thing it's touching like that. This is something that's built in. It assumes because of these things in here, this uh, bricks thing, it presumes it there what the, what the brick is. So it's quite a clever thing in the library that it just knows what you're talking about. So I can do brick dot remove and I can do ball dot direction equals negative player dot angle two and then brick. So basically um, if it's facing the brick, it bounces off it, it needs to bounce back. So that's what that's going to do there. So see if that works. Okay. Uh, oh, for the player, sorry. This be the ball that angle two. So it should now hit brick and then see it bounce off. Hit two there, but too much of a problem. Um, I can go ahead. Now I need to get this paddle working. So it sort of works, but it's easily a little bit dodgy. So what we'll do there as well is let's do ball dot speed equals five. So just it's always setting the speed to the same speed. And then I think the last thing we need to do really is um I think that's it really. I think we need to have a uh, much more. Let's see. We that looks like it's pretty much working if it didn't keep missing. So that's pretty much working there. Um, so what we can do now is probably have some sort of live system. So go ahead to the top. We could have something like um, let lives equals three. If so in here, what we could do is separate this out separately. Or we could just say if um, ball the wires greater than the height. Lives minus equals one, and then if lives less than zero or well less than one, I suppose, but we're just saying, oh, don't think you can see that very well. So, no loop. So, that should mean then that our guy dies. Oh, it's not from then. Um, just fell off the screen. A miss, miss. There we go, it stops looping. So that means it's wet. So if I'm honest with you, that's pretty much it. You may want to um put some text on. So we could do um fill black and text size 32 is usually a good one. And do text, which needs to be lives and then where we're going to put it so let's say i don't know just gonna hit that so let's do it 100 sorry i was going to think there because i don't want it to i want it to be actually visible just off there so you see it's a bit it's a, a little bit maybe that one needs to be the way needs to be 100 i think so now we should just see the lives there we go three lives and then up there like that. Okay. So I've actually put two A's on there, so maybe that's why it was freaked. There we go. So it's working, play the game, and that's pretty breaker. So that's pretty pretty quick actually. What time are we on as well? So let's see how we'll do for time. So I don't know BS, how long have we gone in for? 14 minutes, that's pretty quick. So that's your sort of basics of collision, your balls moving, your intersecting with the group object, and yeah, I think that's pretty easy, quite fun. And obviously then you can change the colours and things, change the background colour, add in multiple levels. So 
you can quite easily use a group, use a for loop when you get to the next level to repopulate the group. Because you can add as many things as you want to a group. So what you could have is you know something like function next level. And then that just does a for loop. And when you get to a certain score or whatever, or when all the things die, it calls the function once and just makes a three grid or whatever and so on. Um, that's been pretty much it. So I will let you go and have a go at this. If you've coded it alongside, I think there's extra bits. If you enjoy the video, like subscribe. I appreciate it. I've had a few students telling me that my um, voice is a bit monotone, but I mean, it's a bit difficult when you're talking on a computer, isn't it? But yeah, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.